Um, as it says, I'm Camille, and I founded Pink Ribbon Lingerie, and it is basically a lingerie company that specializes in lingerie for ladies who've had breast cancer surgery. And I'm going to tell you how I set it up and why I set it up, but I'm going to do it in a very unusual way and talk to you about happiness. So I believe that the path to success is through happiness. It just took me quite a long way to get there. Okay, so this is me. Um, I'm a mother, a daughter, a sister, an aunt, and actually a great aunt as well. I'm a sports fan. I love F1 athletics, and I'm a very, 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 very big gooner. Um, although it's a bit of a bad season. <laughs> so I'm a business owner, but I'm a mentor, I'm a workaholic, but the most important thing is I'm happy. So this is me. Now, when I was five, I wanted to be a bus conductor. <laughs> or I wanted to own Halifax. <laughs> now, there's two reasons for that. The first reason and the second reason are exactly the same. You pay them money. So I thought when you went on the bus at age five, you gave the bus conductor the money and they kept it. And the same time when you went to Halifax, which is where my mum banked, you gave them the money and they got to keep it. So I thought, being a bus conductor or being the manager of Halifax was the thing for me. That's what I was going to be when I grew up. But obviously, I lived in rose-tinted glasses, you know. All I wanted was the simple things, to be rich and to be happy. So, when I was young, I was really lucky. I had a very, very, very easy life. My mum had grown up in a very strict upbringing, and she was told, you'll do this, you'll be home by that, and you're going to become X, Y, and Z. So I had the total opposite upbringing. Sorry. I was told, you can be anything that you want to be, you can do anything you want to do, that the world's your oyster, and um, do whatever makes you happy. And I was also told, the best days of your life are when you're at school. And I was like, oh, don't be silly. And I really hated school as well. And actually, I think they were wrong. I think the best days of my life are now, today, tomorrow, and the next day, because life's what you make it. So, when I was growing up, I got to make my own decisions. I got to choose what secondary school I wanted to go to. I got to choose what GCSEs I wanted to take. I got to choose what college I wanted to go to, what courses I wanted to study. I got to make my own choices. But the downside is that I also made my own mistakes. I couldn't blame it on anybody else. I was responsible for my destiny. But I was also very headstrong. So if somebody told me, you should do this, I'd always say, no, why? Why do I have to? And that's because I was always allowed to do what I wanted. It's called being spoiled. So I also was very ambitious. Um, don't try and play me at Monopoly, because I will win. Um, don't try and beat me at we bowling, because I will beat you. Um, and I've always been a very, very, very happy person as well. But I also always question things. So in life, I question, why do we do that? For example, why do we always take the same journey to work? Why do I see everybody in the mornings sitting in traffic on the A3, going into central London, and they never try a different route? If you know there's traffic there every day, why don't you try a different route? And people in life always seem to go on this boring path and follow everybody. I call those people sheep. I'm not a sheep. I don't follow people around in crowds. I go on my own path and I try different things. So as I was growing up, I thought the world is going to be fantastic. Life's going to be rosy. I can be anything I want to be. And then on the 5th of December, 1994, my life changed. I was 16 years old and my mum got cancer. And that's the day she told me. And that's the day where life changed forever. I thought I was going to be an orphan. I was going to do, I didn't know how to cook. I didn't know how to look after myself. I didn't know what I was going to be. I thought I was going to be all alone in the world. And um, I was absolutely miserable. I was the only time I could say I was totally depressed. And I was really, 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 really selfish. I was being a teenager, having a stoppy chest, uh, stroppy tantrum thinking about me. I didn't think about my mum and how she feeling, is she going to be all right? And it took me about a good two or three months, not even weeks or days, two or three months for me to realise, actually, I'm not the only person in this world and you have to look out for all the people around you and take care of each other. So, um, that's basically what I do. 
but I'm going to come back to that in a minute. So um, when my mum was diagnosed with breast cancer, she was very, very, very brave. She went back to work after having a mastectomy after 10 days and acted like nothing was wrong at all. And I thought, oh, fantastic. She's going to be all right. And she was fine. And um, that was great. And then four years down the line, I became a parent. And that was the point where you're meant to be all fantastically happy, you become a parent, and you know, life's fantastic, and you've got a little baby. But that is the day that I found out having breast cancer isn't a bunch of roses. Because once you're given the all clear, and you're told you're all right, nobody tells you that you've got to wear ugly lingerie. You've got to wear things that are white and black, and beige. You can't get a matching brief to go with it, and it's going to cost you a fortune. Oh, and it's really ugly as well. So, my mum moaned a lot, and I first discovered this when we went shopping for nursing bras for me, and I said, oh, they're really boring. Oh, I don't like them. They're ugly. And she said, but that's better than what I've got, and that's when I had that little light bulb moment. So, I, my background is in buying and merchandising, and as a merchandiser, you're told you can have, you, you should have the right product in the right place, at the right time, at the right price. And that wasn't happening for ladies who had breast cancer. So I decided I wanted to make a difference. And I went to set up a lingerie company so that I could help women feel beautiful, provide them with products they wanted, and so that's what I decided to do. However, it didn't work out that way. Because when I first decided to set up my business, um, I um, found that there was a lot of struggle. I was 22, and people said, you're too young. You can't do that. What do you know about running your own business? I was also told by the bank, I'm not going to lend you the money. So what did I do? I didn't know what to do. So I decided to put it to one side and carry on with my career. But everything I did within my career, it was with the aim to set up my own business. So I carried on with my career, and then seven years later, I went back to the bank. And guess what? They said, we're in recession. We're not going to give you the money again. But I decided to persevere, and I didn't end up getting a loan from the bank, and it was really a blessing in disguise. So the moral of that little story is don't ever give up and always think out of the box. So I started the business, but the reason I started the business was because of this book, The Alchemist. Who here has read The Alchemist? If you haven't read it, please read it, because I think most of the people that had their hand up will probably agree it's quite a good book. So The Alchemist is a very, very simple book, and I got given it for my 30th birthday. And um, it's a, basically a story about your journey. I won't tell you much more about it, because that's giving the story away, and you won't bother to read it. But basically, that book gave me the kick up the arse that I needed to say, start the business. So I read the book. I started it on Saturday evening. I finished it at 3 in the morning on Sunday night. And Monday morning, I resigned. And then, if the, I launched Pink Ribbon Lingerie. Now, it's not that simple. It didn't happen overnight. I took a year to develop the business. And I decided, OK, I love lingerie. Other ladies love lingerie. And I'm sure there's a few men love lingerie, too. And I thought, what do you look for? So you want something that's pretty, that's feminine, that doesn't cost a fortune. All of those things, women who've had breast cancer should be able to get. And that's basically what I've done. So I've sourced products from all over the world. They're tried on ladies who've had breast cancer surgery before we choose to stock them. And that's how we started our collection. And so we are now a year and a half old, and we're about to go into our second season. And we sell beautiful swimwear, sleepwear, and lingerie. So that's why I started the business. That's how I started the business. And as a business owner, I should tell you some things. So if you're not a business owner, and you want to be a business owner, it's hard work. I'm not going to lie. It's not easy, but it's very rewarding. I also learned that good is good enough. Things do not have to be perfect. I'm a perfectionist, but in business, if somebody likes the product, they're going to buy it, even if it doesn't have the right font on the page. Don't worry, OK? Find the gap in your market, and don't copy everybody. Don't be sheep. Do something different. If there's something you hate when you go online or into a shop, make sure you don't do that thing. Do the thing that makes it simple. Challenge everything. Never pay the first price people offer. And if you have to pay that price, get something added on top. 
So always challenge. If you do not ask, you don't get. As I've said before, think outside the box. Find something that you're passionate about. It makes your life easy. You're happy to get up in the morning. It motivates you through those hard days, especially in winter when it's dark and raining. And someone told me that if you, you won't work a day in your life if you do something you enjoy. And they're right. And that goes back to being happy and happiness. We spend most of our day at work with colleagues, more than you do at home, with your children, with your partners. So make sure whatever you do is happy. Even if you don't run your own business, whatever job you have, do something you enjoy. Because having a smile on your face or smiling to somebody is infectious and it makes you happy. So when you're on your tube on the way home and there's these miserable people, smile at one of them. You might make their day. I'm going to leave you with a quote by John Lennon, which goes back to being five years old again. When I, was five, when I was five years old, my mother always told me happiness was the key to life. I went to school, and they asked me what I wanted to be. When I grew up, I wrote down happy. They told me I didn't understand the assignment. I told them they didn't understand life. So, the path to success is always found in happiness. And you can find me here. And if you know anybody who's had breast cancer, they can find me there. Thank you very much.